Today's lesson is going to be about humbling ourselves, all right? As we come into this truth, we learn a lot. Uh, we gain a lot of knowledge that people in the world and that people within the body, they don't know the things that we, that we know, all right? So with that, we have to hold ourselves accountable, all right? Give me uh, 1 John 2 and 16. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Uh -huh. For all that is in the world, uh -huh. the lust of the flesh mm -hmm. and the lust of the eyes, mm -hmm. And the pride of life mm -hmm. is not of the Father, but is of the world. All right, so pride, the pride of life, all right, that uh, vain glory spirit, all of those things, it said it is of the world. All right, so us being Israelites, now we have to understand that that me spirit, that uh, it's about me, it's about uh, how many scriptures I know, it's about me teaching this and teaching that that that's not the right spirit, all right? If it's not about repentance and getting us people to the kingdom of heaven, that's the most important thing. We must understand that at all times and that the most high is always at the center of, our, of attention, all right? From there, give me 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 8 because we got to find out how do we get that spirit on us in the first place? How do one day we think we are entitled or uh, we feel that this truth must give us something? All right, how do we get that spirit? Give me that, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now as touching things offered unto idols, mm -hmm. we know that we all have knowledge. That what? We know that we all have knowledge. So we must understand that everybody has knowledge. Read. Knowledge puffeth up. Knowledge does what? Puffeth up. See, knowledge puffeth us, puffs us up. We think we know more than we actually do. We think we're greater than we actually are because we learn through scriptures. Read. But charity edifies. Right. The way you actually act edifies people. Read. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, uh -huh. he knoweth nothing. Mm -hmm. Yet as he ought to know. Right. So when you think you know something, the Most High says you don't know it as you ought to. That's why the Most High set up order. He set up this because right when you think you know something, that's when you get uh, even better understanding. Uh, that's when the Most High humble you and teach you that you don't actually know what you thought you did. Alright, give me Galatians 6 and 3. Alright, because we we must get rid of this spirit because the second you think you are big or you think you know something, that you, you, you're, le you're leveling yourself off because now you're not leaving any room for growth because you know it all. Read that. Galatians chapter 6 verse 3. Mm -hmm. For if a man think himself to be something, uh -huh. when he is nothing, uh -huh. he deceiveth himself. He does what? Deceiveth himself. You see that? When brothers and sisters think they are something, the Most High says you are nothing and you deceiving yourself. Because at the end of the day, you got to, whatever we do, whatever we do, however many great works we do, nothing measures up to the Most High Son, which is Christ. He was perfect. So whenever you think you're doing something, whenever you think you're putting in works, and you're doing great things. Yes, it might be good, but don't ever get big-headed or think that you've done something. Because Christ laid down the ultimate sacrifice. He laid down his life. All right? Until one of us can say that, we, we, we shouldn't ever feel uh, some type of way about ourselves. Now, give me uh, John 14 and 26. Because we come into this truth, we learn, all right? we start putting forth great works. That's great. And some brothers might actually start to think that, you know what, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No. Christ said, no, it's not you. You're not doing anything. You're only doing the will of the Father. All right? Give me that, John 14 and 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. he shall teach you all things. What, and, what, what you should do? He shall teach you all things uh -huh. and bring all things to your remembrance. Uh -huh. So Christ is the one that's teaching us all things through this Bible. Now jump down to 15, chapter 15 and verse 16. John chapter 15, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Ye have not chosen me. What? Ye have not chosen me. So don't think now you're doing all this, you're doing, no. Christ said, you have not chosen me, read. But I have chosen you. So the Most High brought us into this truth, read. And ordained you mm -hmm. that ye should go and bring forth fruit. Right. So you're only doing the duty that you are called to do, which is bring forth fruit, which is to do great works. Read. 
and that your fruit should remain mm -hmm. that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you right so don't ever feel like oh yeah i came into the truth and i've been doing this and i've been doing that yeah and I, I i no 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 stop the talking and realize that christ chose you christ brought you out of your situation that you were in from there give me first timothy chapter three we're gonna start at verse one because this issue a lot of times is with the newer brothers i don't know how this happens but newer brothers come in and they're talking back to the leadership to the elders to the bishops to the captains and we got to examine this spirit all right we got to get get rid of it read that first timothy chapter 3 verse 1 mm -hmm. this is a true saying mm -hmm. if a man desire the office of a bishop mm -hmm. he desireth a good work right a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife mm -hmm. vigilant sober of good behavior mm -hmm. given to hospitality apt to teach mm -hmm. Not given to wine, mm -hmm. no striker. Not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler, not covetous. Uh -huh. One that ruleth well his own house, uh -huh. having his children in subjection with all gravity. Right, so you gotta know how to rule your house to be the leader of a church, read. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, mm -hmm. how shall he take care of the church of God? All right, this is what I want. Verse 6. Not a novice. Not what? Not a novice. Right. So just because now you can break down Deuteronomy 28, that don't mean you're ready to be a, a captain or ready to be a deacon. No, not a novice. Read. Less being lifted up with pride. Being what? Less being lifted up with pride. With pride. Because see that? When you start to learn the scriptures, you get a sense of pride. That's why we went to all those scriptures before, showing you that it's not your own doings. Read. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Right. You're going to fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because now you're getting all these types of spirit on you. And you think you know everything. So guess what you don't do? You don't reach out and ask anybody questions. You think you can handle it on your own. That's not how you're supposed to do it. All right. Now. It said pride. Give me uh, Proverbs 16 and 18. Let's go into this pride thing. All right? Because the scriptures, we're going to read the scriptures. Pride, that pride, that sense that you know it all, that's the beginning of your downfall. Read that. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Pride goeth before destruction. What, what goes before destruction? Pride goeth before destruction. Uh-huh. And in haughty spirit before a fall. You see that? Pride going before destruction. So 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 say, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith or not. So brothers and sisters, if you ever feel that you're getting a sense of pride, you better check it quick. Because that says it goes before destruction. Destruction is coming if you don't get that spirit off of you. From there, let's go to um, 2 Chronicles chapter 32. 2 Chronicles chapter 32. We're going to look at one of our forefathers who got the spirit of pride on him. And we're going to see what happened to him. And and how did he get out of that spirit? Second Chronicles chapter 32 and verse 23. All right? Because the things written aforetime were written for our learning. So that's why I always try to include an example of the Old Testament. The stories of our forefathers. Read that. Second Chronicles chapter 32 verse 23. Mm -hmm. And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Now this is the king of Judah. Read. So that he was magnified. He was what? Magnified uh -huh. in the sight of all nations from this forth. So Hezekiah was on, he was a high stature. Read. In those days, Hezekiah was sick to death, mm -hmm. to the death, and prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. So Hezekiah, in his great stature, he ended up being sick. Now we're going to see what what caused this sickness to come upon him. Read. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. Uh -huh. For his heart was lifted up. His what? His heart was lifted up. You see that brother and sisters? He got that spirit of pride on him. And the Most High jacked him up for that. Read. Therefore there was wrath upon him mm -hmm. and upon Judah and Jerusalem. So because of one man's pride, he messed up the whole nation of Israel. Keep reading. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah mm -hmm. humbled himself. He did what? Humbled himself. You see that? Once he, uh, once he realized, he analyzed what what the sin was, what the issue was. He humbled himself. Read. For the pride of his heart, uh -huh. both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, 
so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. You see that? His pride had got him. His pride got him, brothers and sisters. That's why that, this thing is very serious. You got to examine it. Read. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches mm -hmm. and honor, mm -hmm. and he made himself treasures, I'm sorry, treasuries for silver mm -hmm. and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all manner of pleasant jewels. All right, stop there. So he, he ended up getting pride on him because he didn't, he, he stopped to thank the Most High for everything that he got. For some reason, he thought that, that was by his own doings and he got lifted up. And the Most High sent him that fall and that sickness. But when you read, he humbled himself and the Most High gave him 15 more years. All right, now go to uh, Sirach chapter 10. Sirach chapter 10, verse 12. All right, because the pride, that pride is the beginning of sin. That's why we got to examine this thing. Read that. Sirach chapter 10, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For the beginning of pride is when one departs from God. You see that? The beginning of pride is when you depart from God. So when you start to glorify yourself, you think you know this, you think you know that, you're actually moving yourself further away from God. Read. And his heart is turned away from his maker. Uh -huh. For pride is the beginning of sin. Pride is what? The beginning. All right, give me Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Mm-hmm. Fulfill ye my joy, mm -hmm. that ye be like-minded, having the same love, mm -hmm. being of one accord, of one mind. Mm -hmm. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Through what? Strife uh -huh. or vainglory. Or vainglory. That's something that our brothers and sisters get caught up in. Vainglory. Read. But in lowliness of mind, uh -huh. let each esteem... I'm sorry, let each esteem other better than themselves. Right, so how could you ever get a sense of pride on you if you always esteeming another brother higher than yourself? That's how you combat that spirit, all right? If you always compliment, uh, uh, exhorting another brother, that spirit of pride won't come on you. Read. Look not every man on his own things. Right, don't always worry about, oh, how I did this, or how I did this, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Read. But every man also on the things of others. Right. Think about how other brothers, this brother is laboring in the truth. How that brother is putting in a brick. Think about your brothers and sisters before you so quick to compliment yourself. Read. Let this mind be in you, uh -huh. which was also in Christ Jesus. Which was also in who? Christ Jesus. Now think about that for a second. Christ was the perfect man on the face of the earth. But it said in his mind, he was looking on other brothers and sisters at the works they were doing. Knowing that it don't measure up with anything that Christ did. Christ walked on water. Christ fed 5,000. But guess what? He was like, you know what? I like the way Paul did that. I like the way Mark did. I like the way Luke does this. Even though he's the perfect example for our people, he still looked upon the thoughts and upon the works of others and exhorted others. Read. Who being in the form of God, uh -huh. thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Read. But made himself of no reputation. He made himself what? Of no reputation. Right. He made himself of no reputation. He didn't make himself big. He didn't try to make himself unavailable to the people. Read. And took upon him the form of a servant. The form of a what? A servant. So you were able to reach out to Christ and talk to Christ. Read. And was made in the likeness of men. He was made in the likeness of men. Read. And being found in fashion as a man. Uh-huh. He humbled himself. He did what? Humbled himself. See that? Christ humbled himself. Read. And became obedient unto death, mm -hmm. even the death of the cross. You see that? So Christ gave us the perfect example. It showed you that his mind and spirit that he had, why that spirit of pride never got on Christ. That's why he was able to fulfill the will of the Father to perfection. All right? From there, give me uh, Galatians 5 and 26. Galatians 5 and 26. Because that's probably one of my favorite scriptures right there. Because Christ was perfect and he still was able to look on other brothers and sisters and exhort them. Knowing that their works are not near what he's doing. Read. Galatians chapter 5 verse 26. Mm -hmm. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Let us what? Not be desirous of vain glory. Right. Don't worry about uh, you getting this rank. Are you getting uh, acknowledged for this and that. Don't worry about the vain glory. Read. Provoking one another, mm -hmm. 
envying one another. So the most I say don't be like that. Don't be vainglory. Don't be it is always about you. What can what what you did? Or uh, how you doing this? How you doing that? Don't worry about that. Alright, from there, give me uh first Thessalonians two. First Thessalonians chapter two, we're gonna start at verse five. Because what happens is when you start to talk about yourself, that's where that puffed up spirit comes in. And that's where you think you know it all. And then pride starts. And guess what comes after pride? That's right. That fall. Read that. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse five. Mm -hmm. For neither at any time use we flattering words. Mm -hmm. As ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness. Uh -huh. God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory. Nor of men sought what? Nor of men sought we glory. Right. The, the apostles and the disciples, they never sought out glory. Their main goal, their main objective was preaching Christ to the death and getting people to repent. That's how we should be. Read. Neither of you, mm -hmm. nor yet of others, mm -hmm. when we might have been burdensome, as the apostles of Christ. Read. But we were gentile among you. They were gentle among the I'm people. sorry, gentle among you. Uh -huh. Read. Even as a nurse cher cherishes her children. Right. Meaning they cared about the people. They genuinely cared. It wasn't something they just doing it for show. No. Read. So being affectionately desirous of you. Being what? Affectionately desirous of you. Meaning the apostles and the disciples, they truly cared about the people they were dealing with. It wasn't for vain glory. It wasn't to get likes. It wasn't to have a big congregation. They truly cared about brothers and sisters. Read. We were willing to have imparted unto you, mm -hmm. not the gospel of God only, mm -hmm. but also our own souls. They were putting their own souls into that thing. Read. Because ye were dear unto us. Uh huh. For ye remember, brethren, our label, our labor mm -hmm. and travail for laboring night and day. Because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. Uh -huh. We preached unto you the gospel of God. Right. So the disciples and the apostles, they, everything they did, it was based around pleasing, not pleasing, but satisfying the people around them so that they can have the chance to repent. So if they had to work a job so they wouldn't be of any service, they did that. If they had to travel to reach out to brothers and sisters, they did that. It was never about them. That's the same spirit that we have to have. All right. From there. Go to Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 1. Because Christ laid the example for the, for the apostles. And then Paul and all the rest of the disciples, they followed it up and they kept that thing moving. All right? And we got to do the same thing today. Don't worry about ourselves. Worry about this truth, pushing this truth to the next level. Read that. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Boast not thyself. Do what? Boast not thyself. The scripture says, boast not thyself. Read. Of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Right. Because you don't control what's going to happen. That's why we always say, Lord willing. Because we, when you truly understand this Bible, you don't control anything. Read. Let another man praise thee. Do what? Let another man praise thee. Right. And if we, when you're doing works, not seeking vain glory, guess what? Other men will praise you. They, they, they will acknowledge your works. The most I say is promotion cometh of God. So don't worry about that. Just put in the work. Put in the bricks. Read. And not thine own mouth. And not what? Not thine own mouth. Read. A stranger and not thine own lips. So the most I say is don't do that. Let others sing your praises. The same way Christ. Christ never spoke about himself, but guess what? He's the most famous man on the face of the earth today. Everybody knows who Christ is. And when he was on the earth, guess what? Whenever, whenever he was talking to a disciple, he said, who did this? Who did that? He said, shh, don't tell nobody. That's how Christ rolled. That's the example he set for, for us. All right, from there, go to John 8 and 54. Because Christ understood that his works he did on earth they were only going to be worth anything if the Most High acknowledged it. So if we got to follow up, what does the Most High want us to do? Let's find out. John chapter 8, verse 54. John chapter 8, verse 54. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, if I honor myself. Right. If I praise myself. Read. My honor is nothing. My what? My honor is nothing. Right. So if you always talking about yourself, <laughs> that means nothing. Read. It is my father that honors me. It is who? It is my father that honors me. It's the father that's going to honor us, brothers and sisters. Read. Of whom ye say 
that he is your God. Right. We're going to get our reward in the kingdom of heaven. We're not going to be on CNN. We're not going to be uh, on ESPN for, for getting the most uh, converted saves. We're not going to get that glory on this earth. Most valuable Israelite. <laughs> right. You're not going to get the most valuable Israelite award. It's not going to happen in this earth. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. All right. Our reward is going to come in the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. From there, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. That was pretty good. I like that one. The most valuable Israelite. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Sorry, verse 1. Uh, 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. Uh -huh. But he that glory, let him glory in the Lord. Read. For not he that commendeth himself is approved. Right. So the brother or sister that 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 uh, approves himself, it says it doesn't mean anything. Read. But whom the Lord commended. Right. Whom the Lord commended. That's that's when we're gonna get that glory and praise at the end of the day, because we're not gonna get it on this earth. All right. From there, let's go to uh, Sirach 43, because. For, for pride to enter in and you not to be humble, you have to think that you're doing something that nobody has ever done before. All right? And the truth is, everything that we've done, our forefathers already have done. Our brothers and sisters amongst us have already done. That's how you have elders, you have bishops, you have deacons, you have captains. They've put in their work. All right? Read that. What verse? Sirach chapter 43 and verse um, 30. Sirach chapter 43 verse 30 uh -huh. When ye glorify the Lord uh -huh. Exalt him as much As he can Do what? Exalt him as much as he can Right when we putting in this work We, we doing it to the glory Glorification of the most high God Read For even yet will he far exceed mm -hmm. So whatever we doing the most high Is still exceeding more than our praise That we give him Read and when ye exalt him, uh -huh. put forth all your strength, uh -huh. and be not weary, uh -huh. for ye can never go far enough. No, you can go too far. Ye can never go far enough. You can never go far enough. So guess what? Even in the Christian church, with your uh, wicked mom screaming and dancing up and down, guess what? That still ain't enough for the most high. And for brothers and sisters in the truth that's doing righteous acts, that still ain't enough for the most high. Alright? So just understand that before you... You want to draw, sing praises to yourself. Understand that anything we do is not enough for the Most High God. From there, go to Matthew 23. 23 and 11. Alright? Because it says, sing praises to the Most High as much as you can. With all your strength. Read that. Matthew chapter 23 verse 11. Mm -hmm. But he that is greatest among you uh -huh. shall be your servant. Him that is greatest among you shall be what? Your servant. So the greatest person among you is the servant. So it's different from out in the world. Out in the world, when you're the greatest person, you don't do nothing. You don't lift a finger. Everybody. No. The most I said, the greatest will be a servant. That's why the bishops, they take calls at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Why? Because they understand his Bible. So they understand that the more you get, the more is, um, what is it? The more given. More the more required, required. right. The, the, more, the more you are given, the more is required of you. So if you get a spirit of pride on you, you're going to think now that you've done something, you think you don't have to put in any work. I don't, nobody can't call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's not the way it works, and it's truth, though, brothers and sisters. Read. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall exalt himself uh -huh. shall be abased. Right. If you want to put yourself up high, the most high going to jack you up. Read. And he that shall humble himself. He that what? How shall humble himself uh -huh. shall be exalted. Right. That brother or sister that's putting in works quietly. They just keep doing their job. They just keep chipping away. The most I said, they're going to be exalted. Why? Because they're not seeking vain glory. Why? Because they're not thinking about what they can do for themselves. They're thinking about the body. All right. From there, give me uh, Sirach 1 and 30. Because the Bible gives very, very plain instructions. Such a beautiful book when you keep in God's law, statutes, and commandments. Read that. Sirach chapter 1 verse 30. Uh-huh. Exalt not thyself. Do what? Exalt not thyself. Read. Lest thou fall mm -hmm. and bring dishonor upon thy soul. Mm -hmm. And so God discovered thy secrets mm -hmm. and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation. Right. When you exalt yourself so high, the most I say, I'm going to reveal everything you're going to through the whole congregation. Read. Because thou camest not in truth. To the fear of the Lord. Right, because you don't truly fear God if you think that you're something great. 
you didn't you didn't truly examine yourself. Read. But thy heart is full of deceit. But what? Thy heart is full of deceit. Right. Your mind is full of deceit. Because you think you're fooling the most high. You think that you you you've done something that the most high didn't tell you to do already. You think, oh, the most high didn't tell me I'm gonna do this for extra credit. So now I'm gonna get more praises. No. Everything that we do is ordained of God. From there, let's go to Sirach chapter 3 and verse 17. Sirach chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. My son, go on with thy business and meekness. And what? In meekness. Shouting and telling everybody what you're doing. In meekness. Uh huh. So shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. Right. That's the most I got. Read. The greater thou art, mm -hmm. the more humble thyself. Right. The greater you are, the more humble you should become. Why? Because the more understanding you get, the more knowledge you get, the more you realize that our people are at such a low estate that you have even more work to do. That's why it says the greater you are, the more humble. The more humble you should become. Were you going to go to Ecclesiastes 7 7? Mm -hmm. Could you bring that over? Uh, let's go to make a point, what you just said. So, Officer C just said, Sirach 3 and, 7, 3 and 18, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. So. Mm -hmm. so, you have to realize the greater you are, the more understanding you get, you're going to see your surroundings. You're going to see what's going on with your people. And that means you realize how much more work you right. have to put in. Right. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. So as you increase in knowledge, you become wise. You attain that wisdom. All right. So it makes a wise man mad. Read. And a gift destroyeth the heart. All right. Here, go to uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Mm-hmm. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Take heed unto yourselves, read. And to all the flock over the over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. Right. So we are the overseers of the flock, read. To feed the church of God. To do what? To feed the church of God. Uh-huh. Which he had purchased with his own blood. Right. So it's our job to feed the flock. But there's an issue. You're not going to be able to complete that task if you have the spirit of pride. If you think you are better than every brother or sister, guess what? A brother, a sincere brother is going to come up to you and he's going to say, what is Deuteronomy 28 and 68 talking about? And guess what? You're going to be so full of pride that you can't even answer a basic question. You're going to look at the brother and discuss. But the most I say, you can't be like that. That's why he says, humble yourself. Humble yourselves, brothers and sisters. From there, go to 1 Peter chapter 5 and 6. 1 Peter chapter 5 and 6. Because whenever things start interfering with you doing your job as a leader of the congregation, that's not that's not good. Read that. First Peter chapter five verse six. Mm -hmm. Humble yourselves. Do what? Humble yourselves. Uh huh. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Right. We gotta humble ourselves to this Bible. Read. That He may exalt you in due time. Right. And He's going to exalt us in due time, brothers and sisters. You will get your glory. You'll get your fame in due time. All right. From there, go to Zephaniah three and nineteen. I'm going to show you, by you humbling yourself today to these scriptures, that the Most High is going to give you what, what some of you seek for. Alright? What our forefathers had. What Solomon had. What David had. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, mm -hmm. and I will save her that halted, mm -hmm. and gather her that was driven out, mm -hmm. and I will get them praise. And fame. He will get us what? Praise and fame. Right. You will get that praise and that fame. Read. In every land where they have been put to shame. Right. In those places that we've been put to shame is here in our captivity, brothers and sisters. But you got to understand that us being the prophets of the Most High, you're not going to get that fame and that glory in this in this world. Not not in today's world. Read verse twenty. Verse twenty. At that time will I bring you again, mm -hmm. even in the time that I gather you. Mm -hmm. For I will make you a name. You will make us a what? I will make you a name uh -huh. and a praise. And a praise. Read. Among all people of the earth. Uh -huh. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes. You see that? By you being humble, by you being uh, diligent in your works, by you being meek, by you thinking about other brothers and sisters, the most I say he's going to give you praise. He's going to give you glory. He's going to give you fame. 
But in that time, in that day, that's when it will happen, brothers and sisters. Alright? Now, with all that said, we have to apply these scriptures in our lives. Give me that scripture, brother. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Because us listening to these scriptures and us saying, yeah, that sounds good. We need to humble ourselves. We need to check ourselves. That, that sounds good, but the Most High doesn't deal with sounds. He doesn't deal with thoughts. He deals with actions. Read that. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Mm -hmm. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. So don't say, oh, that ain't me. That ain't me. Examine. Examine the matter and see what comes about. Read. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, uh -huh. and by him actions are weighed. By him what? Actions are weighed. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, we pray that each and every one of you, brothers and sisters, that we all examine ourselves. And if we see pride, or if we see that vainglory spirit on us, that we remove it. All right. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.